So cryptocurrencies have been the fastest growing asset class in human history. What if we could harness these powers to create exponential progress in saving the planet? That's what I'm here to talk about today. So far, in my view, older generations have failed to create the change we need to combat climate change. Instead, they're often choosing to kick the problem down the road or even just ignore it entirely. I was recently at COP26 and marching with thousands of other protesters, I found it inspiring to meet the eco-activists and entrepreneurs who are driving the change that we need. At the same time, I find it totally shocking what's going on at a global level. We've had 26 of these conferences and emissions are still on the rise and we're nowhere near to meeting agreed targets. Where do we go from here? So 35 years ago, sustainability became the buzzword. And it still is today. And now all we hear about is companies going net zero or carbon neutral by a certain date. Regeneration is about positive impact. Doing more good rather than just less harm. And it's about restoring the health of individuals, communities, and the biosphere, and creating a future that is continually getting better. So to get there, I think we need to create a financial system that provides the right incentives and rewards for the regenerators. And that's where I think crypto can help. So within crypto, there's an emerging sector known as regenerative finance, or refi for short. Um, and before I get into to refi, I think we first need to to give some background on, on what is crypto. Um, so when it comes to crypto, you may have heard of Bitcoin. It's usually the first thing that people think of. What I find exciting about Bitcoin is it was actually the invention of what's become known as blockchain technology. So you can think of blockchain as a network over which you can exchange assets. Um, this can be information or, or other assets. Uh, and Bitcoin used this, uses its blockchain for its digital currency, a decentralized global digital currency. But it can be used for many other things. So then came along Ethereum. Now, Ethereum, you can trade many other assets, such as you know, NFTs of, of art, digital art, or even tokenized stocks and real estate. So collectively, the uh, Ethereum ecosystem has evolved into what's become known as Web3. So you can think of Web3 as being based on a set of values, such as being peer-to-peer, -peer, that's removing intermediaries who often extract value and rent-seek from transactions. It's also built on principles of being open source, so you can view the code, anyone can access it, add to it, rather than it being owned by these centralized monopolies. And the other, the other interesting feature is that it's often more participatory, right? It, it can be owned by a collection of people rather than just being owned by a small group of people. And they can participate in its governance um, and make decisions that help govern our digital lives. So altogether, what blockchain and these tools enable are, are for us to create new applications and organizations that can be more global, decentralized, and more democratic in their nature. ReFi is about harnessing these tools and putting them towards a regenerative future. And I think there are some really, really exciting projects going on. Before getting into ReFi and some of its amazing things, I think we should first address some of the more questionable sides to crypto, some of which you might have heard about in the news. So one of the things that often gets talked about is the huge energy footprint of blockchain. So Bitcoin actually consumes as much energy as Sweden at times in its network operation. And on Ethereum, minting a single NFT can cause the equivalent carbon emissions of roughly driving 1,000 kilometers in a petrol car. That's pretty shocking. So another aspect is that people, people argue that crypto can enable an expansion of financialization and of capitalistic principles. But do we necessarily really want to attach a financial value to everything? How would we even go about pricing things like nature, cultural norms, and social movements? And what could be the unintended consequences of doing so? I think these are really important questions. 
So another side to this is that many people who get into crypto often doing it for the sole intention of making loads of money. So there have been a, a whole range of so-called meme tokens, usually animal-related, dogs in this case. Um, and, and the sole intention is piling in, drive them up, go to the moon, uh, make loads of money. Dogecoin actually started as a joke, but it actually reached a market cap of over 80 billion at its peak, which is pretty crazy. So I think this can be entertaining, but in reality, I don't think it creates much real value or utility for the world. And much worse than this are a raft of scams and illegal activity which can be facilitated by the darker sides of crypto. Despite all this, I really do believe that crypto can be a huge force for good through refi. So yeah, before we get into all those exciting refi applications, how can refi do good in the world if blockchain is consuming so much energy? So actually, there are already blockchains out there that with every transaction are removing carbon from the atmosphere. So Celo Network is an example of this. They're, they're actually estimated to be eight times carbon positive. And that's where a lot of refi applications are built. And they're using a transaction mechanism known as proof of stake, much, much more efficient than the proof of work that's used by Bitcoin and Ethereum. And many of the other leading blockchains are also using this mechanism. And Ethereum is also planning to make the switch to this uh, mechanism, which it expects will decrease its energy footprint by up to 99.9%. So altogether, what this means is that refi applications can be built on infrastructure that is climate positive. So let's get into what refi can actually do in practice. There's a wide array of projects in the space, and they're organized around um, restoring ecosystems, stabilizing the climate, and providing funding for public goods. And at the same time, they're supporting regenerative industries, such as in agriculture, renewable energy, and the circular economy. And a key part of this as well is also aiming to create social and economic justice as well. But of course, it needs more people to come into the space and have their say. I think the more unique perspectives we can bring into the space, the better. So let's dive into a specific example, which is with carbon credits. So carbon credits provide an incentive for projects around the world to withdraw carbon from the atmosphere. They then create these credits, and companies, people, even governments can buy these credits to offset their emissions. Now, people are often very critical of carbon offsetting, and I think this is fair enough. The current market has a lot of problems. You have issues of double counting, or how do you actually verify the claims that these projects make, and also this question of additionality. Would, would the project have gone ahead anyway, and therefore, is there any additional material impact? So I think these are important questions, and the whole sector needs more oversight. But ReFi can help to solve some of these challenges and perhaps make carbon credits one of the most powerful forces for combating climate change. So I was actually recently in Costa Rica. The wildlife there is really, really amazing. And I was speaking to our guide, and he was explaining how, how important credits had been for providing an income to the farmers and promoting regeneration and stopping them from deforesting. And since 1990, Costa Rica has actually doubled the size of its forests and become the first tropical country in the world to reverse deforestation. I think this is an inspiring story for the world to look towards. So what is ReFi actually doing in practice to help solve some of the challenges here? So Token Protocol on the left, they're creating a global interconnected infrastructure for carbon markets. So instead of countries having their own systems with different standards, we can create a global infrastructure that everyone can plug into, and it avoids issues such as double counting, and can create a level of transparency that the market needs. So Regen Network, they're kind of like uh, OGs, I guess, in the refi space, you could say, uh, really started some of the amazing foundational work driving this stuff. Um, and their project is, what is focused on a lot on, on actually verifying the claims. So verifying claims of, of carbon, but also 
in terms of soil health or biodiversity, um, creating this so-called proof of regeneration. Climadel, they're a really cool project. Um, they've developed a really interesting crypto economic system that actually sucks in carbon credits, locks them up in a vault, removing them from the market, driving up the price of the credits, making it more expensive for polluters and more rewarding for the regenerators. So there's some really exciting work going on here, many other projects as well that I can't mention today. So another example is with NFTs. So we can actually create NFTs that support our environmental and social values. So on the left, uh, I've, I've highlighted Crypto Coral Tribe. So their NFT profile pictures support coral reefs. And in the middle, the 100 million mangroves project, they're selling NFT art that is supporting the regeneration of coastal regions around the world. And the Moss Amazon NFT project, they're actually creating a green wall in the Amazon to block deforestation. Of course, NFTs are not a panacea. There are many issues and deeper issues that need to be solved, solved here. But I think they can provide a really useful mechanism for, for providing funding for the things that people care about. So my next example is called quadratic funding. So for giving the rather technical sounding name, at its core, it's a mechanism to help democratically allocate funding towards projects in an ecosystem that generate the most amount of public good and actually involve people in that decision rather than just one party deciding and making all of the decisions. So Gitcoin is a really good example uh, of a project in the crypto sphere that's driving this. And to date, they've raised over 55 million for open source software, digital public infrastructure, and even humanitarian causes such as the crisis in Ukraine. What I think is most interesting about quadratic funding is it's actually part of a wider movement within crypto and within ReFi specifically to upgrade our democratic systems. So traditionally, you might see a bit of a trade-off between systems that are very centralized and can be very efficient and systems that are more decentralized and can be more democratic. And this is why we often see large bureaucracies forming in governments and in corporations. But what if we could actually upgrade the infrastructure from which humans coordinate and we collectively make our decisions and allocate resources? I think this is going to be increasingly important as our lives become increasingly digital and technologically driven. And this is, again, what ReFi is helping to work on. My final example is about how money itself can drive regeneration. So you may know that the dollar was originally and used to be backed by gold. They actually had gold bars stored in a vault, and then they would print dollars um, and distribute them around the world. And what inevitably ended up happening is they printed too many dollars, and then when countries were asking for their gold back, they couldn't do it. Um, and the system collapsed. We now have the system we have today, which is a dollar that's driven by supply and demand, global currency markets, and the Fed can print as many as they like, which they have duly been doing. So what if instead we could have a currency that was actually backed by nature? So the value of this currency could go up when nature was being restored and ecosystems were thriving. And conversely, the value could go down when natural capital is being destroyed. In essence, more money would mean more trees. And at, at the core of this, we could create a financial system that was regenerative by design. So when I think of the future using these regenerative lenses, I think of solar punk. And I love this vision for a positive future. Rooftop solar, green buildings, pedestrianized walkways, and of course, a thriving natural world. And a key part of this as well is social and economic justice, and not being dominated by vast centralized power structures and big tech corporations. In essence, solar punk is the vision for refi. So, Investing in crypto, and Bitcoin specifically, has often been described as taking the orange pill. Today, I'd like to invite all my listeners to instead take the green pill of refi. Together, we can drive things in the right direction and create a future worth fighting for. Thank you.